that opening scene, man. Damn. Ah! Razorback. The 1984 film based on the uh, 1981 book by Peter Brennan. Oh yeah. Russell Mulcahy went from directing an award-winning music video to a high-budget B-movie. Let us see what he hath unearthed. The plot. Reporter and animal activist Beth Winters has arrived in the outback to find some dirt on a local dog food manufacturer called Pet Pack. She steps into the danger zone rather quickly and becomes the target for two of the company's employees, the Baker Brothers, Benny and Dicko. That's actually his name. After a tussle, they leave her to face a monstrous beast. One that a man, Jake Cullen, lost his grandson to. Now, along with the help of Mr. Cullen, Beth's husband, Gene, must find out what happened to his beloved wife. So it's a story of a search for revenge and of a missing loved one. Neat. This movie grabs you and holds you until the end. There is a visual style that is prominently in the forefront and is as vivid as it is vile. I love the whole undercover angle this movie starts with. It sort of reminded me of Psycho in a way. Then the movie actually pulls a Psycho near the beginning. I won't spoil how, but it's quite the scene, and it's probably predictable based on my plot description. Gene is a fish-out-of-water character that doesn't know how to survive in this environment. He is a well-meaning businessman, and in that he definitely is not in his element. The actor, Gregory Harrison, does a pretty good job of showcasing the vigorous torture he goes through. His performance isn't as memorable. I wish more about how he was feeling was told, not shown. That seems to be Mulcahy's style. He chooses sight over substance. This is not a detriment to the film, though. It's beautiful yet haunting to look at. The characters are not bland, either. Bill Keir does a heartbreaking good job as Cullen. He is a damaged man. He saw a monstrous boar take his grandson away. Now, he seeks vengeance. Speaking of the boar, this fool scary. It's like a stampede every time it charges at something or someone. It becomes a threat and a character in of itself. Sarah Cameron, who is played by Archie Whitley from Mad Max 2, well, the Road Warrior, is Jake's right-hand assistant, and she has this aura about her. Archie is quiet and timid, but she commands quite the presence. The character of Sarah is a pig tracker of sorts. She tags them and monitors their movements and progress. It comes in handy later. But for who? That's the million dollar question. David Argue and Chris Haywood played the brothers Benny and Dicko. They are an interesting pair. They seem like polar opposites, yet they are not. It's rather unsettling. The gore, the effects. We get some blood and is it an impaling and a gruesome fan shopping. It isn't terribly gory, but there's enough filth to make you unsettled. There are deleted scenes with extra gore. I wish it made the final cut, but the Umbrella Blu-ray does have them as special features. The boar is a sight to behold. It looks sick, like it's ill. There's nothing sweet about the swine. The motion picture soundtrack, I have a Davy composed one of my favorite creature feature scores of the 80s. It is so hypnotic and spellbinding. It truly is a grabber of your ears. It is pleasant and can really make you feel something. Razorback is, in my opinion, the best killer pig movie out there. It's got the feeling to it that hasn't been matched by any other creature feature I've seen yet. Definitely give it a watch for quite the experience. It has a great cast of characters, awesome creature effects, and stunning music, as well as a brisk pace and a visual style that's only Mulcahy could have pulled off. Overall, I give Razorback a 4 out of 5. Lion Brian Gatto, host of Horrors Entertainment. Make sure to check out my Twitter and Facebook page in the description below and leave comments and subscribe.